you don't want to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all stop, put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Let's praise the name. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. We are happy to be here today. If you're happy to be here, shout hallelujah. You are not shouting hallelujah. That means you're not happy. If you're happy to be here, let's shout hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. What's his name? Your Savior. If the Lord is your 
Let's just clap for our choir one more time. Let's just clap for our choir one more time. Well done to our amazing, amazing, amazing and happy and joyous choir. They did an amazing job. It will be a happy day in Jesus' name. So welcome, 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 welcome to our Ignite Conference 2024. Are we excited? Did we enjoy that session? Did you enjoy that session? That's good. A round of applause to our Lord Jesus Christ and to this amazing choir. Thank you so much. Thank you. So let's introduce ourselves first and foremost. So my name is Emanuela. I am one of your moderators for today. And my name is Olawande. A lot of people call me Wendy. Thank you. You guys are not clapping. You guys are not clapping. I didn't just stand here for no reason. Be clapping, be clapping, be clapping. 
So we want to introduce everybody here to our Ignited, um, Ignited Conference 2024. We have a lot of amazing things lined up for you guys today that you're all going to enjoy. It's going to be a wonderful time in God's presence. So um, you guys can sit down for a moment now. Thank you. Rest your feet. Rest your feet. Thank you. All right. So before we carry on, we just want um, us to refresh our memories. What are we here for basically today? Why are we here today? The Ignite Conference, right? Okay, and what's the theme of this conference today? Times and... Okay, so we want to introduce you to a slogan that we would be using all through this conference. So it's really very simple. And when we say times and seasons, you say now is the time. And when we say when is the time... The time is now. That's the response. So when we say times and seasons, now is the time. When is the time? The time is now. When is the time? The time is now. Times and seasons? Oh, sis callers, God bless you all in Jesus' name. So when I say when is the time? The time is now. When is the time to gain financial independence? When is the time to gain spiritual intelligence? Time is now. When is the time to start soaring? The time is now. Good. The Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Um, so I need the media to just catch up for a moment. Hey, so welcome, welcome, welcome to being part of our Ignited Youth. Um, it's we're privileged to have everybody here today. Um, we have, in this Ignited Youth, we have a lot of different parts to our youth. We've got a lot of departments, a lot of different things that you can involve yourselves in. So these are the departments on these screens. Um, please have a look. And if you're not involved in anything yet, involve yourself. Like, we have so many different beautiful departments. We have the prayer unit. We have the choir. have the ushering. We have social event team. There's so many different things. There's 16 units altogether, I believe, that you can join in on. So please don't be afraid. Um... Try and find somebody and we'll lead you to the leaders of those teams and you can get to know them so that you can join in one of those teams. Um, it would be lovely to have you there. Okay, so do we have um, Minister A-Wave in the house already? Do we have Minister A-Wave in the house already? He's supposed to give us a rap session. Is he here? A-Wavy, are you here yet? A-Wavy? Oh, he's here. Oh, thank you. Okay, just but, before yes. A-Wavy comes up, we just want to seize this opportunity to welcome you all once again. And we want to take this opportunity to say um, a big thank you to you. A big God bless you. Thank you to our ministers. Our daddy, Pastor Isaac, very well, ably represented by himself. I can cite our mommy. A round of applause, a round of applause. Thank you for being part of the program today. We appreciate you. Our doctor, able doctor, Anne. She never misses our program. She's here as well. We just want to say thank you. God bless you. We appreciate you. Everyone present here, I tell you, without you, we would not be gathered here today. So thank you for coming. All our first timers, we're going to continue to appreciate you and would appreciate you more even during the course of the program. We want to say welcome everyone as Minister A. Wavy comes up but just before he comes up we have a little we have a little quiz so there's going to be t um, two winners and you're going to collect a prize so our first question is what was the theme of our last week's of our last um, year's youth week does anyone know anybody oh Perfect. beautiful Perfect. meet us at the end you'll get a prize from us yeah and our second question is mention two ministers from last year's conference do you remember? Two ministers. Two ministers from last year's conference. We don't have the time, so if nobody can answer, we'll take our gifts away. Oh. It's the, uh, Pastor, so Guest answer, ministers please. that we invited from abroad, anywhere? No. no. Go in. What Go in. Oh. Go in. Who? Sister Nacha. Well, it's Fine. a chorus answer. We'll cancel it because we Sister haven't got Nacha the time. Sister Nacha's hand was up. Oh. Yes. You got it. You got it. Thank you very much. Hey, Wavy. Hey, Wavy. Please come up for your performance. Let's all A clap. round of applause as we all... welcome A. Wavy. Keep clapping, please. It's not easy to rap. You'll see what I'm talking about. Carry on, carry on, carry on clapping to encourage him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. When 
community. See, there's more to life, more to life than meets the eye. More to life, we know it's in the end, we all live and die. More to life than raise and friends. See, heaven's real, and we all got time. See, the book of Ecclesiastes teaches time and season. So best know we all got time, meaning every time's got a place. Every purpose, slow but appealing, could be fast like lightning. But left to his grace, there's a time to be born and a time to go waste. No farmer, but best know there's a time and due place. A time to go plant and a time to go pluck. And deep is always stocks and prophecy. I pray that we're fruitful and our deeds and our ways. No, that's wrong. Pray that we're fruitful by faith. Genesis, season of life. Everything God designed, it was by his might. And he's mightier than hope, fueled by love. None like, all has a purpose. What do you mean we originate from apes, bogus, talking banana, ogre See, first John 4, 1, yeah, you really got to test them. Even your season, you can still meet false teachings, doctrines. Be prepared, guard up, boxer, pray up, walk strong like Noah. Cause them ways can come like a tidal, straight up. And he can hide you for a great purpose, like he done did Elijah. So be strong like Samson, who cares if you face tiger? I care, treat yourself like thy neighbor. Yeah, I'm just being real, realistic. Just God says face it, I'ma break it like a Kit Kat. Figure of speech, and just like the Bible, Bear figures of speech. So if you're taking the word, though the wisdom will preach. And if you stand by that, though the power will reach. See, we all for God. There's no hour, no niche. So be careful. Philippines 4 4. Let your joy overflow. Let's be grateful. Claim your season. Because without doubt, you might meet times where your prayer will get prayed on. Even in the book of Romans, says we will keep your eyes on. In the time of salvation. So please don't get the time wrong. See, it's all in your hand. And I walk by faith. Yeah, my God's unbreakable. He's capable, cape off or cape on. Psalms 31 15. Yeah, I cut the flesh, I have the word on. Lukewarm, I pour them semi. Yet to receive grace, and their fire is missing the colon. Ephesians 1 7. Yeah, we all have sinned, and you know you done bad, but you want your redemption. It's the season of grace. I'm not talking food when I pray for my season to be healthy. Season with taste. Know the times that we're in, a lot of evil around. So know the season we face. Know the evil around. So know the season we face. Thank you. Woo -hoo! That was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. I wish I could rap. I really wish I could rap. Honestly, it's just a gift God didn't give me, unfortunately. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. God gave me plenty. So I had to leave the rapping for somebody else. But it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Next time. Next time. Next time. So that was amazing, um, Minister A. Wavy. But um, now we're going to go and let's just, I just want to introduce um, the man of God himself, our very own doctor, our very own pastor, youth pastor. He's the part of the reason this event is happening. He's in fact the reason this event is happening. So let us give a warm welcome to Pastor Sumto. Thank you so much. I want us to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the maker of the whole universe, our God, our King our savior, our friend, our shepherd. Let's celebrate him one more time. Let's celebrate the king of kings. Is the reason why we are gathered here today. Is the reason why we can say it is another time, it's another season to experience God's goodness. Praise the Lord. I want to say a very big welcome to every one of us who's connected and who's come to join us in person. Um, it's a full house and very soon will be a very full house. I want us to also celebrate A Wavy. Let's celebrate him. I, I probably I think his notes are even more than what he's wrapped is more than what I've written down here. So um, it's not an easy one for him to have. Um, I, I was listening to him and I was just nodding when we had like the dress the dress rehearsal. Uh, this year our theme is called Times and Season. Maybe we'll start with the song. You've got times. And seasons in your hands You call for light Out of darkness You don't need a man To be the God you are You are 
comes to times and seasons our times the seasons the Lord brings us into everything is orchestrated by God our lives is orchestrated by God and when it comes to seasons in our lives there are certain seasons we come to as individuals that once they are past you can't bring them back you can't make them last if they are past but then there are certain seasons as well that when they're there, you have to run through with that season. And trust that God will take you out of the season. It also comes down to our lives as God's children. And the world around us. Because the world around us is something that God has already orchestrated. God, it's like a written script. And the life we live, we can find everything in the scriptures. We can find how to navigate the season of life. By simply looking at the scriptures. And one of the things I've found is that like a map, sometimes you need to bring a disjointed map. You need to bring various parts, bring them together and join them and it makes all the sense. Like in the scripture, the times we are in has already been spoken of. The season where we are currently living in has already been spoken of. And one of the things I found that is the fact that all we have and all our journey from now has already been stated. It's already been established. And when we talk about the end times, the end times is something we've come to realize. You hear it from different individuals, end times, end times, end times. And maybe we don't understand what that means. But the end times is that particular time of life that will usher us as God's children into the coming of God or the second coming of Jesus. We have to be mindful of this time. We have to be careful of this time. Because one of our anchor scriptures, we'll find it in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Maybe we'll look at it. our anchor scripture for this year's theme. One of them is Luke 12, 35 to 49. But I'll say let's look at verse 35. We'll look at verse 36 and we'll look at verse 40. If the media can help me there. Luke 12, 35. It says, let your loins, can you, let's use um, NIV. Okay. Let's see 20, 35 again. It says, let your loins, NIV please, let your loins, I want to see, be dressed, okay, that's the word, be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. Verse 36, it says, like servants, waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes, and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. Verse 40. It will be good for those you must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Now look at this picture Jesus Christ painted for his disciples and the people listening to him. He says, be dressed, be ready, and be like that servant who is aware that the master can come at any time. If you look at verse 38, it establishes that the servant, the master, he says it will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready 
even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. So his master has gone. The servants are there. And they are waiting for the coming of their master. And then the Bible is saying that he could come at midnight. He could come towards the daybreak. He could come when they are not ready. It could come during odd hours. One of the things I want us to realize is that the time of the coming of the Lord is not going to be at an expected time. The coming of the Lord will be at a time we do not expect. For the servants, it might be at midnight. What is the midnight hour? Is that time when we're just too tired and we want to rest? Is that time when we're just too busy asleep? are not aware of the things that are going to be happening. And so one of the things Jesus Christ established, he says, my coming will be at a time you do not expect. It will be at a time you were not prepared for it. It will be at a time when you were probably asleep. And one of the instructions was in verse 35. He says, keep your lamp burning. Stay ignited, stay on fire. Stay active. Be ready. Keep that lamp burning. Even if you're tired, keep the lamp burning. The times where you come to and you find out that, oh, I don't even have any urge to pray. You wake up and you're like, I don't have any other way to go. You're like, I'm, I'm lost. He says, keep that lamp burning. So that it doesn't become like that servant who was not there watching. Having done all to stand. And then on the final moment, he's not ready. One of the things Jesus Christ also explained is that the coming of the Lord will be like in the time of Noah. It will be like that time when there was so much distraction. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 34, 24 verse 37 through to 20, um, 39, it says Noah was not ready. Um, Noah was ready, but people were getting married People were eating, people were drinking. And then Noah got into the ark. And Jesus Christ established in verse 37. He says, the coming, my coming will be very similar to what as it was in the time of Noah. So for us to be ready, distractions have to be taken out of the way. We have to constantly be on fire. And that's why the conference this year was set up. Because what will happen to the world is that there will be so many things that will cause distractions. There will be issues with business. There will be issues with your academics. There will be problems with marriage. There will be problems around the world where there will be wars and there will be rumors of wars. The whole reason all of those things will happen is to cause distraction. But one of the things I found out about the scripture is that while for the last days, the Bible says... That there will be so many things happening to the world around us. But the things that will exist to the world around us are not supposed to affect the believer. The things that would put pressure on the world would also put pressure on the believer. But there is a way of escape the Lord has set for the believers. So in the book of Malachi chapter 4, talking about some of the things that will be happening in the end days. Malachi chapter 4. Let's see verse 1. Malachi 4 verse 1. It's talking about the end times, which is the times we're in. It says, surely the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and the evildoer will stumble, and that day will come. Will set them on fire, says the Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left. So it's talking about there's going to be a time where the whole world will be surrounded by heat. Heat. And that heat will be what? Will destroy the earth. But look at verse 2. Because one of the things that happens is that even though there is doom that is promised for the unbelievers, it says, but for you who revere my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays. So while for the world there would be destruction, he says, the person who fears the Lord, that will be a time for you towards to rise. Now, while the world is surrounded by all the chaos, God will set in motion a position for his children to rise. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, 
something similar was mentioned. It says, arise and shine, for your light has come. This should be the position for the believer. But look at verse 2. It says, but darkness would cover the unbelievers. It says, thick darkness over the people, but the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear over you. If anyone has promised you that the remaining days will get better, that the remaining years would be so exciting when it comes to the world around us changing in the positive. The Bible says, no, that's not what will happen. The enemy will constantly keep on thriving. Darkness would constantly keep on thriving. But God has set in motion another principle. The principle that God's children will arise and they will shine. The principle that God's glory would rest upon his people in so much a way that if it was difficult to carry out ministry before now, in the last days, God would make it possible for you. What are the things we need to be doing in this time? If the Bible has said like in the days of Noah, so will it be for us. Then we must learn from Noah and what and build the ark. Like Noah, you must appreciate seclusion. You must appreciate the fact that you would not have to do whatever other person is doing. You must appreciate the fact that you would need to be different from another person. Noah was so different, so they mocked, they mocked him. They laughed at him because what he was doing was weird. But if God has made it possible for you, the believer, to understand that the world around us will be surrounded by darkness and you need to shine, so what would you do? Like Noah, you would begin to build the ark. Building the ark would mean embracing seclusion. Would mean embracing a life that is devoted to God. Would mean not being conformed to the world. Will be saying the word. The Bible says concerning Noah that he kept on declaring the word. That the time is coming but nobody listened to him. And when the Bible says arise and shine your light has come. God is also saying that in this time and in this season. God will be raising up Josephs. But these Josephs will not come from the place of comfort. They will come from the place of what? Of discomfort. They will not come from the place of the palace. They will come first of all from the prison. But would you be willing to embrace this prison moment that God will take you through? This moment where it will look like God is silent on your situation. Because if you would appreciate this moment, then you become that man, that Joseph that God has stated would show forth and shine forth in this time and season. I'm going to end with this. In the book of Exodus chapter 31 from verse 2 to 3. God speaking, he spoke to Moses. And was talking to Moses. He says, then the Lord said to Moses, verse 2. See, I have chosen Bazalel, son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah. Verse 3, and I have filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom and understanding, with knowledge and with all kinds of skills. Verse 4, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze. Verse 5, to cut and set stones to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of craft. Verse 6, he says, moreover, I've also appointed Oliab, son of Aismach, of the tribe of Dan to help him. Also, I have given ability to all the skilled workers to make everything I have commanded you. This statement came from a place where God gave Moses a dream. And this dream was to create a tent, a dwelling place for the Lord. When the Lord established this dream, he then told Moses, look at this person, look at this person. Look at this person. Look at this other person. I have given them skills. The reason why I have given them the skills is so that they will be able to carry out the work. Every skill that the Lord has given to you, you must realize that there is a dream in the heart of God.
for that skill. Every ability, every talent, everything that you think is working well for you in your life, that thing that, you, that seems to be easy for you to carry out, there's a dream. And so when you look at the skill that you have, you must identify what the dream or the mind of God is. If Bazalel has just sat down thinking he was so skillful, thinking he could do all of this, and could not realize that there was a God who gave him that skill. For some persons, look at the other person, he said, I have appointed this person to assist. Some of you are just called to assist someone to achieve the dream the Lord has given to them. Some of you are called to pioneer things. But everyone has been given a talent. And in this time and age, one of the things God will be doing is that those who will realize the talent and the skill God has given to them and also identify the dream behind that talent to bring that skill and the dream to fulfill God's dream, you'll become a candidate for the glory of God. So that's why this conference has brought together a realization of the times we're in and the fact that we must employ the skills the God, Lord has given to us to achieve his ultimate dream. When you serve the Lord, there is a reward. And God will equip you for the assignment. Every skill must find its use in God's dream. So the questions you will be asking yourself today is, Lord, what am I going to do for you? And if it's a question you've asked yourself before, then I'll say the time is now. If it's a question you're asking yourself now, I'll say the time is now. Because the time is what? The time is short. And the Bible says, Jesus says, it says, blessed is that servant who's when, whom when his master comes will find so doing. You have to be doing something for the Lord. Not so saying, not so proclaiming, not so acting, not so claiming I'm a Christian, but what so doing. It's time to get the skills that the Lord has put and we realize that it's time to shine. While the world around us will be surrounded in darkness, God will raise people, agents of change, and they will take on the world. Praise the Lord. If you're clapping, please do it well. Do it well. Do it well. Do it well for Jesus. Thank you so much. God bless you for that powerful exhortation. The Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Even as we continue with our program, our conference this evening, would like to recognize the presence of special people amongst us. And we'll start with our convener. I'd like to call them, for the purpose of this conference, our mama and our papa. Do you get what I mean? Like in a youth setting. If you're in a youth campus fellowship, you know what I mean. When you say mama and papa, you know who you're referring to. Our daddy and our mommy. If you're clapping, please clap well. With a standing ovation, please. With a standing ovation, please. Our mama and our papa, Pastor Joshua Kende and Mrs. Adiola Kende. We say thank you so much for this opportunity. We do not take it for granted. Thank you. God bless you. May we be seated. Thank you very much. We also want to appreciate our invited guests, Evangelist J. Smith. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Our pastors, we cite you. Bless you. Thank you. Also, Living Waters, are you here? Living Waters, are you here? Oh, God bless you. This set of people, they've been wonderful. They've been wonderful. They've always been consistent. They've never failed us. The Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Do we have the script team ready? The script team, are you ready for us today? If you're ready, please come up. Thank you. We're waiting for you. Please come up. We have one announcement as well. Please, if you've got um, your children with you, if you've got toddlers, if you've got babies, could you please help us, you know, manage them for the purpose of this conference just so that, you know, we get the most we can get. We don't want them running around the front. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Script team, we're waiting for you. Thank you very much. Sure, 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 sure. Ah, Baba. Old man, where are you going? My son, 
I'm going for evangelism. At this old age? Oh, at this old age, my son. I wish I had done things earlier than now. Huh? I wish the information and the knowledge that I have today have made use of it earlier before this time. You see, I don't have enough time. Time. Time is gone. Time. And I still have to do the little that I can do. But you can't do it. You are checking. Papa, go home. Don't worry, I will do it. I know I can't do it. But I will still do the little that I can do. No, you are checking. You, you see, my son, stand. I will just advise you. Okay. This is still the best time of your life to save your maker. Mm. Make the best use of the time and the advantage that you have. Mm, you see, I will not stay long. Okay. I still need to preach to one of my neighbors there. I'll see you, my son. But go and rest. Thank you. I wish you good luck. Remember, make the best use of the time that you have. Thank you. Time. 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 I call this day to hold weakness against you. For I set before you life and death, blessings and cause. Ignited youth, therefore, choose life, that thou and thy seed live long. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. Lo, I come in the volume of the books as it was written concerning me to do thy will, O God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. And the five silly virgins came knocking on the door saying, Sir, so open the door. And the bridesmaid said to them, Go away because I do not know you. And Jesus said to the people, Be careful because you don't know the day or time I will return. Matthew 25, 11 to 13. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. Time, time, time. The only fundamental unit of destiny. That which acts as an independent variable and remains constant in almost physical equation with relations to motion and projectile motion, of which irrespective of the duration of your acceleration is a reduction if you are not in the right direction. Time is the only thing all men has in common, both the young and the old, the rich and the poor, the literate and illiterate, the Christians and non-Christians. It's all boils down to you, making your right decision and your right choice to follow the right pathway. That is why I classify life as C between B and D. Brethren, Life is choice between birth and death. Let me start by telling you the story of a man who, after so much persuasions, gave his life to Jesus at the age of 75. I know we say there is no lateness in God, but the strength, rigor, vitality of a youth can only be experienced once. No wonder a wise man once said that man is an acronym for morning, afternoon, and night. Morning ranging from the age of 0 to 25, afternoon from 25 to 50, and the night season from 50 till death. Well, cheers to Golden Jubilee, cheers to Diamond Jubilee, to every individual seated here. Because within the twinkling of an eye, we will all be there. The glory of the youth is indeed their strength. Summer, winter, autumn, spring. 365 days, 12 months and 48 weeks. It comes and it goes. The rain and the sun. It's day and it's night. It's dark and it's bright. <laughs> Things I could do, praise I could sing, worship I could render, all I could give, just to glorify my Father in heaven. Because now, whilst it's today, and I've got the spark in my eyes, and light in my heart, and power in my knee, now in my youthful days, I render unto Him myself in honesty and truth. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4 to 6. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. And the children of Issachar, men who understood times and know what Israel ought to do. First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32. Listen. This is a season to reason and contend for high spiritual illumination, discernment and knowledge because we are in the perilous time. Having discernment of the time and knowing season is not enough if you don't know what you ought to do. But rather, 
there is a time to plant. There is a time when it is good to have this. There is a time when a second seed needs to be planted. Because if the time goes by and they are not planted, when the season of harvest comes, there shall be no harvest. And there will be three categories of men on their deathbed. The first category will be men who truly live, becoming all that the Creator had proposed for them from the very beginning. The second category will be men who tried but could have done better. And the last category will be men who only existed but never lived because they never fully came into the existence of that which the Creator had professed for them. And so I ask you today, that which the Creator has given to you, when exactly do you want to start to use them? Why sing in the bedroom the voice that is meant to bring healing to nations? Why write books and keep in shelves and diaries? And also in libraries, when the books are meant to bring healing, deliverance to generations yet unborn. If you were God, the great investor, how exactly will you feel? Think about these things. I know you're not. A statement has so dread. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to feel it. So now while the sun is up, I will make hay and some more. So when the night comes, I can reap what I have sown. Things we could do. We all have seasons now. Like we all have seasons of hardship, of pain, of struggling, of depression. But every story starts with a once upon a time. So what is your story? A story of once upon a time of a life spent triumphantly of a life spent wasted spent idling away then sent to the grave with gifts and talents all released so i say once more to you today while you have the spark in your eyes and the light in your heart and power your knee i say to you to render unto you in self in honesty and truth Ecclesiastes 3 verse 7 to 8 and I quote A time to reign and a time to sow A time to keep silence and a time to speak A time to love and a time to hate A time of war and a time of peace And as we are the ignited youth, we stand for peace The last question to ask yourself is What season are you in now? What seed are you planting? Are you planting the right seed? Or are you eating your seed? Be like Joseph who through the sermons of time and season was able to orchestrate the models of brandings and the patterns and structures of which keeps Egypt for sustainability in the years of famine and also in the years of plenty for such a time like this known as pension. Again, we are reminded that very soon and very shortly the boss will come and the boss will come. The boss as in B-O-S-S and the boss as in B-U-S. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every single individual according to his work. And so we encourage you today, be like Esther in the land of Susha, a strange land for such a time as this, raising the banner of righteousness for Jesus to be revealed and glorified. Be like Daniel in the land of Babylon, who with faith and trust, the Lord that makes and makes king, the king that gives wisdom and understanding, the king that reveals all hidden and deep secrets for such a time like this. Be like Deborah, a warrior, the only woman who was a judge and a prophet in Israel, a warrior in such a time as this. Thank you Thank very you. much. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you wave your hands to Jesus and shout a big hallelujah to the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. So um, we have a special presentation titled Oluwa the Day. And um, as we sing this song, it is our soul desire that the Lord will arise in your life, that the Lord will arise in your family, that the Lord will arise in your career, that the Lord will arise in everything that concerns you. In the name of Jesus.
Somebody make some noise in here! Who's on the left side? Who's on the left side? If you're on the left side, make some noise for Jesus! Get it up! 
amazing wasn't that amazing can we cheer a little bit louder you know it's part of the choir so if you're not cheering for the choir at least cheer for me like let's clap a little bit louder i just want to appreciate as well the script team that um poem the spoken word was absolutely amazing i don't know if you guys have heard spoken word like that before but i haven't and that was my first and that was amazing that was absolutely amazing like i said ignited choir we did amazing we did amazing if i do say so myself uh, <laughs> so we have an, a, a special guest in our midst, an evangelist. So can the media team please help me um, and play the video, please? The Bible says, the Bible says, for God so loved the world, God so loved the world that, he gave that he gave his only son, his only son that, whoever that whoever believes in him, believes in him will not perish. Will not it says Evangeline J leads by re, leads Rise for Church International at Evangelistic Organization. He's founded after graduating um, from the C. Sorry, media team, can you please help me? Sorry, guys. From the CFAN boot camp, where he was trained by Evangelist Daniel and the CF. SN team. Since 2002, RFC has trained over 1,000 people in evangelism and has launched four evangelism teams, wow, in four cities in the UK, conducting nine outreach per week. Wow, 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 wow. This is awesome. This is awesome. They've shared the gospel with 9,373 people, um, seeing 1,977 decisions for Jesus. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Um, uh, Evangelist Jay pioneered the mass outreach initiative, gathering and training large groups of, um, for evangelism and the Jesus celebration. He has also conducted gospel campaigns in the UK in collaboration with local churches. Can we just rise and give a round of applause for Evangelist Jay Smith? Isn't that awesome? Can we give a, uh, a bigger round of applause for Jesus Christ? Come on. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. Because in, in the words of Rhino Bonke, he said, you know, um, in his quote in the, the scripture, you may be seated, and he said, without him, we can do nothing. You know, we can do a whole lot of nothing. Amen. But with him, we can do uh, all things in Jesus' name. Well, first of all, what an incredible honor and privilege to be here at the Ignite Conference. Come on, isn't this an amazing start um, to the conference? What an amazing... Um, time of worship with the choir and um, Pastor Santo, what an incredible word that you, you stirred us with earlier on. I just want to honor um, Pastor uh, Joshua and um, Pastor Adi Bola. Did I get it right here? Yeah. Awesome. It's a, it's a real honor to be here and may God bless um, the work of your hands that you're doing here in Wolverhampton and all that he's um, set you to do. May God bring a change and a shift to Wolverhampton in Jesus' name. Well, I just want to um, begin by praying. If we just bow our heads and close our eyes, and if we could just settle our hearts before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you came to save us from sin and hell and into a relationship with God. And Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Though Jesus ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father, the Holy Spirit is the abiding presence of God that lives in us and is with us and empowers us to carry out God's mission in the earth. Lord, to break the power of the enemy and to see the lost become sons and children of God. So Lord, I pray today that as I speak, Lord, it wouldn't just be my voice to hear, but the voice of the Spirit of God. Lord, to pierce every heart. Lord, to reform and to redirect that which you've uh, desired for each person to do. Lord, we bless you. We are honoring you. We praise you uh, this afternoon in Jesus' name. And everybody said? 
Amen, amen, amen. Well, I'm excited to be here, um, and I want to stick strictly to my time. You know, a preacher's worst enemy is the clock, and all the preacher said, amen. You know, I once heard of someone that was invited to speak for 30 minutes, and after 30 minutes, he was still speaking, 40 minutes, an hour went by, and the preacher was still speaking. The person that introduced him could no longer take it, so he picked up his iPad, and he threw it at the speaker. Mr. Speaker hit somebody on the front row. They said, hit me again. I can still hear him, so hopefully, that isn't your experience this morning. Okay, you're a bit late, but you got there. There's a story of a man who, who loved to do things for an adrenaline rush. You know, there's people that do crazy things. But there's this man, and what he decided to do was to cross the Grand Canyon on a, a tightrope. So he gathered all the people, and they came to watch him from miles away. And he began the journey of crossing the Grand Canyon from one side to the other. And as he made his way across, he, he got there safely. Then he made his way back. And people were looking closely to see if he would do it or whether he would fall to his death. But he got to the other side. And then he said, who believes that I can cross the Grand Canyon with a wheelbarrow? And which everyone began to cheer, yes, we believe that you can do it. So he got the wheelbarrow and he began to go from one side to the other very steadily. And finally he reached the other side. I'm going to come to the last part of the story at the end of the message. You know, thieves and criminals often get away from when they break into a house simply because the owner is not staying awake all night waiting or expecting for their arrival. And so when, when a thief breaks in and, and then the, the person that's asleep gets alerted, they have to you know, come from their distorted uh, sleeping state to, to the process of waking up, then realizing something's happening in the house. Then by the time they get there, the thief is gone, and most times they're long gone, and they don't get caught. And many people often live this way. You know, nobody really lives and expects somebody to break into their house. In Luke chapter 12, verses 35 to 40, it says this. And these are the words of Jesus. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. Be like men who are waiting for their master to come, from, to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door for him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants who find uh, awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at the table. He will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, if the master of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You must also be ready, for the Son of Man comes at an hour that you do not expect. Friends, Jesus is returning. And the sad reality is, is many people won't be ready. And so we must ask ourselves the question, if he's returning, what's he returning to do? And the scripture gives us a very clear picture. Number one, he's coming to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. It doesn't say that he's coming to bring salvation to those who go to church. Because you can go to church, but that doesn't make you a Christian. It just means you go to church. He doesn't say that he's coming to bring salvation to those that go to prayer meetings or read the Bible. Because these are the activities of a Christian, but in of themselves, they don't make you a Christian. Then he's also uh, coming back to deliver us from the wrath to come. The Bible says to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. By the way, it's not a lazy sense of waiting. where we do not, It's a proactive waiting where we're busy with the work of the master. Thirdly, he's coming back to judge the world. Our God is a judge. You know, and when I think of people, when they break the law and the court date's given for them, they're not uh, waiting or they're not too worried um, about the date. But the moment it gets closer and closer and closer, all of a sudden the reality begins to set in that they're going to stand before the judge and give an account for what they have done. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it says, In the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who will, will, will 
judge the living and the dead in view of his appearing and his kingdom. Number four, he's coming to, in that judgment to either throw people into the lake of fire or to bring eternal salvation and that they may enter the kingdom of God. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20 verse 15, and if anyone names who's not found written in the book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire. Think about that for a moment. You know, hell has no fire exits. <laughs> but even in a sense, that's not something we should laugh about. Because people right there are now begging for a, a second chance. And in fact, what they should call us to do is to mourn and change our life and how we view life and how we view the Word of God and how we view evangelism and how we view what Jesus has done on the cross. You know, in the scripture it says, be dressed and ready. But I like what the other version says. It says, gird your loins. Gird your loins. What are your loins? Your loins are the part between your hip and your upper leg. It is the seat of physical strength. It is the place of generative power. When you move it, it comes from here. And so we have to gird our loins. The early way of dressing in the first century, they didn't have trousers like we have. They actually had long garments that would cover past their knees in between the shin and their feet. And so if all of a sudden a fire was to break out in this place and they run and the loins aren't girded, they could trip up, they could stumble and they could fall. They could hurt their cells and also those who were also trying to escape. And so if you're not ready, if your loins are not girded, that can cause a lot of problems. Do you understand what I'm saying? Girded loins is a position. Say position. It's a position of readiness. Say readiness. It's a position of readiness. Not just with your clothes. So when you gird your loins, you pull up in back in the day with the garments there. They've pulled them up be above their knees. So it's not just a position of getting your clothes in the right position or your hands. It's actually the posture of your body. And so as you gird yourself, this causes the whole part of your body to be ready for immediate action and to leave quickly. In Exodus chapter 12, as the Lord's preparing the Israelites to uh, be delivered from the power of Egypt and to, to be set free to worship the Lord. He says this, in this manner you shall eat it, speaking of the Passover, with your belt fastened, uh, your sandals on your feet, in other words, into your loins. And your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. You know, the Lord is the one that does the deliverance. But people have to be ready. They have to go the loins ready to go. Because God can do the work and he can do his part. But if we're not ready, it's not going to be very impactful or effective. And we see this in 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 46. It says the power of the Lord came on Elijah and took it in his cloak. In other words, took it into his loins. Into his belt. He ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. So God's power came on Elijah. But if Elijah had not done his preparation, he, the power of God wouldn't have been able to function in the body of Elijah. He would have tripped over himself. He would have stumbled and fall. And so there has to be a, a partnership with the power of God that we can be effective witnesses in the earth. There are things that God does, but God won't do everything. And many people, we expect God to do everything. No, you have to play your part. I have to play my part. It's good to pray for God to save the world. But in the words of Rainer Bonnke, unless someone gets up at the prayer meeting and goes and tells somebody about Jesus, nobody will get saved. God partners with people and he expects us to do something. So we have a responsibility. Say responsibility. Many times in Christianity, we like to be like children where we don't really have responsibility. We want somebody else to do, rely on others, but we ourselves don't take responsibility. But we have a responsibility before God. We have to spiritually gird our loins. Right now, we just spoke about the physical girding of loins. But we have to spiritually gird our loins. You say, what do you mean? Well, as he said, be dressed and ready. So what about our dressing? 
So he says in Isaiah 61 verse 10, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and arrayed me in the robe of righteousness. You've got to be clothed in the, 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 the uh, garment of salvation. That means you have to give your life to Jesus. By the way, that doesn't mean you give it and then at times when it doesn't feel comfortable, you take it back. If we surrender our lives to Jesus, let's really surrender our lives to Jesus and leave it at the cross. It's not there for you to take back because then you haven't really surrendered your life to Jesus. We can't pick and choose when we choose to obey him, when it's comfortable. And then when it's not, we, 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 we leave and we abandon and we do our own thing. The robes of righteousness, we're clothed in the, ro- the righteousness of Christ. And the salvation is not of us. We, we, the only thing we contribute to our salvation is our sin. Jesus is the one who does the saving. The Bible says salvation is of the Lord. No man can save you. No pastor can save you. No apostle can save you. No prophet can save you. Only Jesus can save you. Why? Because only Jesus died for you. The church didn't die for you. No pastor died for you. No, no evangelist died for you. Jesus died for you. And he is the author and finisher of salvation. Secondly, we've got to be clothed in the full armor of God. Ephesians 6, 13 to 17, therefore put on the full armor of God. And by the way, once it's on, don't take it off. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Say, stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then. With a belt of truth buckled around your waist. With a breastplate of righteousness in place. With your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this... Take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You've got to be clothed in the armor of God. I want to ask you, are you clothed this afternoon in the armor of God? Thirdly, you must be clothed with power. Jesus said, but stay in the city until you've been clothed from power on high. Why? Because he given them the great commission to go and preach the gospel. By the way, it's not called the great suggestion. Evangelism is not a suggestion. If you feel like it, if you feel eloquent enough, gifted enough, no, it is a command from God. God's kingdom is not a democracy. It's not up for a vote. It's a command. And when the king speaks, he expects it to be obeyed. Then we must be ready. So we have to be dressed, say dressed. And we have to be ready, say ready. So how do we get ready? Through the word. The Bible says in Joshua 1 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. He didn't say meditate on TikTok videos. He didn't say meditate on Netflix films. He didn't even say meditate on your university course. And I know we love education, but we need to meditate on the word of God. Because the education of this world, many times we see it's going to pot and they're teaching all kinds of corrupt and wicked things. Secondly, we've got to crave the word. Do you know when you crave something, you, just, you want to do anything to get it? It says 1 Peter 2 verse 2, like newborn babies crave the pure spiritual milk so that you may grow up in your salvation. You know, I have questions for people that have been a Christian for 10 years but don't know any more scripture than John 3.16. Can't pray for no longer than two minutes. Can't seek the face of God. Can't even tell anybody about Jesus. Red flag. Could you imagine having a baby, but 10 years later, they're still walking around in nappies saying, Dada. You'd be like, something's wrong with that. (laughs) But many times we can be this way in Christianity. If you don't grow in your faith, something is wrong. May I say there's a a sign that probably the, the lack of salvation. Because if you get saved, you cannot stay the same. Nobody touches an electric cable and stays the same. Nobody can touch or come encounter with Jesus and the power of God and remain the same. You have to change. There must be a change. God is looking for fruit. Thirdly, you must hear the word, not just TikTok videos. And I really want to get a point with this generation this afternoon. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Many times we can be unbelieving believers. Unbelieving believers that maybe don't really believe the word of God. It's probably because our meditation hasn't been there. Then we've got to do the word. Say do the word. 
The Bible says in James 1, 22, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And if we don't, that's sin, disobedience. Uh, number five, we must practice the word. Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, everyone who has ears, uh, he, who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. Friends, if you're not practicing the words of Jesus, your house is not being built on the rock. It's only a matter of time that when the storm comes, you will crash and fall. And the reality is this. We can put on a front to the pastors and leaders and other Christians, but God knows our hearts. The Bible says, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind. The Lord this afternoon is searching you and he's examining you. He's looking at your heart. How does it weigh? Then we need the presence. In John 40, 15 verse 40, it says to abide. Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. A branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Notice it doesn't say visit. Psalm 91 verse 1, whoever dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Friends, we've got to stop treating God like a hotel. Where we, where, when we want something, where we want God to do something, that's when we pray. But then any other time we, we don't care. Or we, we just come to God and we, we want stuff. We've got to dwell in the place of the Most High. And as you dwell in His presence, He will change you because you can't abide in God's soul and not bear good fruit. You can't abide in His presence and not be changed. It's impossible. See, if there's no change in your life, there's a sign of the lack of the presence of God. There's a sign of the lack of the Word of God and obedience to His Word. James 4 verse 8, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your heart, you double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. Are you double-minded in your relationship with Christ? Are you double-minded in your Christianity? How do you fare before God? We're not here to impress people. We're here to serve the Lord. He's the one who's going to examine and bring us into judgment. Thirdly, to ready ourselves, we need to obey. Say obey. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. God's love language is obedience. And he doesn't want us to obey slowly, but quickly. And in our obedience to God, we can live in the blessing of God. Do what he says. Jesus was perplexed, and rightly so. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I say? Do you know Lord means master? That means that when he speaks, we obey. But many times we give him lip, lip service, Lord. But he's like, I'm not your Lord because your life reflects nothing of my Lordship in your life. And so we have to be ready. We have to prepare ourselves for his coming by doing these things. Then it says to keep your lamps burning. How do we keep it? I want to ask you, is your lamp burning? Is it burning? Is it bright? Because the... Sign that you're burning is number one, your love for the Lord, your intimacy with the Lord, but also your light, the light of the Lord Jesus Christ in you should be affecting those around you. I want to ask you, are people affected by your lifestyle for Jesus? Are, are other Christians disturbed when they get around you? Are they convicted? What about your friends that don't know Jesus? Are they convicted? Are they disturbed? How are you viewed before people now we don't do this for people we do it for God but there should be an impact in uh, and through our life it says do not get drunk on wine which leads to the beauty instead be filled with the Holy Spirit friends it's time to put down the drink and it's time to be filled with the Holy Ghost because when you're full of the Holy Ghost you will bring transformation there is no way the dunamis dynamite power of God can live on the inside of you and you remain ineffective and you bring no change to your life or to those that are around you. We must desire his presence. You know, we desire many things. Let's desire his presence. You know, if you were to win the lottery, by the way, don't gamble. But if someone was to win the lottery, they would be celebrating and rejoice. Sometimes we get more excited over receiving a blessing than we do about knowing the one who gives the blessing. Many times we get more excited over the hand of God than the God of the hand. More times we get excited over his provision 
than the one who gives the provision. By the way, let me tell you, the, the apostles, they, they didn't have green rooms. They, their, their green room was a prison. They were tortured for their faith. They were beaten in prison. They were beheaded, stabbed by the edge of the sword, thrown off the top of the temple. This was early Christianity. Listen, for the person that is willing to lay down their life for Jesus, they will live an incredible life. Self-preservation is an enemy of the cross. It's an enemy of Christianity. We must desire his presence. As a deer pants for water, so my soul pants for you. My soul thirsts for the living God. Where can I go to meet with God? How do you desire for the presence of God? Hebrews eleven six. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Not just when they want something. They earnestly seek him for him. The, the reward of seeking God is God himself. God said to Abraham, I am your exceedingly great reward. The satisfaction in God, nothing else will satisfy you. Nothing else will satisfy you. Only the presence and the person of Jesus Christ. Thirdly, uh, witness. We need to ready ourselves in witness and not just us, but those around us. Because friends, on that day when people are either going to be thrown into the lake of fire or they're going to enter into the eternal bliss of the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, a few verses later in Revelation chapter 21, he says he'll wipe away the tears from their eyes. Why? Why? Won't we be in heaven? Well, this is the reality. You would have just witnessed the judgment of God on the wicked. You'd have witnessed uh, your, your colleagues, your friends, your neighbors being thrown into the lake of fire. And you'd be like, man, what was I doing wasting my life? Chasing things that you can't take with you. Thank God for that big house, but it can't come with you. Someone asked John D. Rockefeller, one of the richest people in the world, a number of years ago, what did he leave behind? Everything. Everything. We've got to stop storing up our treasures on earth. It's time to pursue God and the kingdom of God and to preach the gospel. Because on that day, friends, it won't be a tear down our eyes. We'll be wailing and crying, why was I wasting my life? Jesus didn't die to give you a mansion on earth or a nice car. He died to save souls from going to hell. And it's time that we were broken, we were burdened, and we were disturbed by what was going on around us. And I find so many times we're too complacent that we can live our lives going to church. And yet throughout the week, nobody knows about Jesus. They don't know that he died. They don't know where they're going. And it's because we have deliberately chosen to keep quiet. Well, let me be honest, many of us are not even concerned about the loss. We don't think about the loss. We, we're so busy with thinking about ourselves and our lives. But people are either going to hell or they're going to heaven. This is why Jesus died. To save people from judgment and hell. And the moment we get on board with God's mission, we will see a transformation in the land. Let me tell you, the devil is making disciples. His disciples are making disciples. They are boldly advancing the kingdom of darkness. Just last week, a 19-year-old in South London, I'm not sure if you saw the video, had a knife machete about this big stabbing somebody else in broad daylight. Why can't the church be as bold? Why are we so afraid? Because, listen, Daniel, evangelist Daniel Kalender said this. He said, how is it that we speak in tongues and we have no power? We can shakarababa. But when it comes to preaching the gospel, I don't want to, I'm going to hide away. The Holy Spirit is a powerful spirit. It's time for the church uh, not to have a form of godliness and deny the power, but to be full of godliness and have the power. Because a church that's full of the power of God will bring transformation to our world. And as I bring this in for landing, you know, right now, there's one, you're in one of these three positions. Number one, there's three people sleeping in the room. And the lights are turned on in every one of these rooms. The first response was a person carried on snoring. They carried on sleeping. And this is my fear this afternoon, is that you can hear the word of God, and yet you're still sleeping. It doesn't bother you. It doesn't affect you. You don't care. It's a dangerous place to be. Don't harden your heart to God. 
dangerous place to be. The Bible says, whoever hardens, hardens his heart and is often reproved shall be cut off and that without remedy, no return. Secondly, the light turns on in the second room. The person opens their eyes and because it's so bright, they say, oh, stop preaching, it's too bright. So stop living for Jesus, stop shining, it's too bright. Stop talking to me about Jesus. They get offended, they get, they get annoyed, they get angry. But then the third person, the light turns on. And although it hurts for a moment, when, when you've been in darkness for such a long time, it hurts, but you allow your eyes to adjust to the light and then you begin to see. Right now you're in one of those three categories. I want to say, where are you? And I want to, um, just before, and I do want to call you to respond briefly. Just want to come back to that story that I began with, with the man in the wheelbarrow. You remember the story? So he began to make his way back, but something devastating happened. The weather began to change. The rain began to pick up. The storm began to brew and he steadily made his way back, but he was rocking from side to side. But guess what? He got to the other side. But then he said this to the crowd, who believes that I can go from one side to the other with someone in the wheelbarrow? And the old chair, they said, yes, we believe you can do it. And then he looked at the crowd and he said, right, who wants to get in? And the crowd looked to the floor and said nothing. Friends, talk is cheap. I think God's done with our talking and no action. Today, God is calling you to respond, to make a decision. Salvation is free. It's fruit is discipleship and that's going to cost you everything, even your life. He's not calling you to comfortable Christianity. If your Christianity is comfortable, you've got the wrong Jesus. I'm sorry. Christianity should be uncomfortable. When was the last time you were uncomfortable? I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. Maybe today you say, you know what, Jay, I'm not right with God. I'm not really a Christian. I've been playing a Christian, but when God examines me, I'm not a Christian. I'm not saved. Today, Jesus loves you. He loves you. He died on that cross to save you. He took your sins on himself. He was buried and he rose again. He took the judgment of God in your place so you don't have to. And if you will believe that he's the son of God, that he died for you, was buried and rose again, if you will turn from your sin and turn and put your trust in Jesus, he will save you. So I want to pray right now. Just pray with me. Say Jesus. Come on, say Jesus. I come to you right now and I am sorry for living for myself. For living in sin, I turn from sin and I turn to you. I believe you are the son of God who died on the cross, was buried in the tomb and rose from the dead. Help me to know you and to walk with you all of my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Save me now. If that is you and you pray that prayer, quickly raise your hand. I want to see you. I just want to pray. God bless you. Is there anyone else? Come on. You, today could be your final day on earth. The next appointment could be the lake of fire. Let's not play around. If you're not right with God, if there's any doubt in your heart that you're not right with God, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray with you right now. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Is there anyone else? Come on. In this section over here, are you right with God? If you were to die today, do you know where you will spend eternity? If there is any doubt in your heart, I want you to raise your hand. Jesus wants to save you right now. Is there anyone? What about over here? Is there anyone? You're not, God bless you. Is there anyone? You're not right with God. We say, Jay, I want to get right with God. God bless you. Come on. This could be your last opportunity. Is there, God bless you. Is there anyone else? Come on. Jesus wants to change your life. Is there anyone over here? God bless you. Is there anyone else? Come on. You might not get this opportunity again. Don't harden your heart to the Lord. Is there, what about this section? Is there anyone over here? Hallelujah. Come on, I just want to pray for you right now. For those who raise your hand, I want you to do something more. Quickly just stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. God bless you. And if you know that you need to respond quickly, you stand to your feet. God bless you. Is there anyone else? Hallelujah. Father, and even while I'm praying, I want to encourage you with urgency because this is an emergency. Young people. I want to encourage you, please, in your youth, you're not too young to get right with God. The disciples were like 14, 15 years old. John, Mark, Matthew, they're, they're all a young age. If you need to get right with God, I want to encourage you to stand to your feet right now. Now is an urgent moment. Jesus is here. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for every person that stood to their feet. 
Lord, I pray right now you'll save them. Give the assurance of eternal life. Lord, that their life will never be the same again. Fill them with the power of the Holy Ghost to live a transformed life. Lord, to be a disciple that radically follows you. Lord, even unto death. Lord, I pray their life will never be the same again. Fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit right now. And maybe there were those of you who say, you know what, Jay, I'm a Christian. I am saved, but actually I'm a bit comfortable. I've been comfortable, but I'd like a change in my life. I want to be on fire. I want to be burning. If that's you, I want you to quickly stand to your feet. I want to just pray for you quickly. If you're not burning for the Lord, if you're lukewarm, because Jesus said he'll spit lukewarm people out of his mouth. If that's you, quickly stand to your feet. We're not here to play around. Come on, you've got five more seconds. If you know you should be standing up, if you want to get serious with God, if you want to be a burning one, quickly stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Come on, all over this place. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for every person that stood to their feet. Lord, I pray right now. Come on, pray me. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Lord, set me on fire. Fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. Change my life. Help me, Jesus, to die to myself and follow you. I want to see a transformation in my community. Help me, Jesus, to preach the gospel undiluted, uncompromised. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, let me burn. Let me be bright and shine for you in a dark world. And Lord, when I wake up in the morning, may hell be trembling. May, he may hell fear me getting up because I serve you and I follow you in Jesus' name. Now go and, uh, go and, and destroy the works of the enemy through the power of the Holy Spirit and the gospel. Change your community. Jesus is with you. God bless you. Can we give Jesus a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. For the next 10 seconds, let's lift up. Let's exalt the name of Jesus Christ. Wow, wow that was amazing. Let's just, can we all just rise up? Everyone stand up on your feet and can we just sow a seed of prayer into Evangelist J. Smith's life, please? That was amazing. Let's just thank the Lord for his life. Oh God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Lord, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for what Evangelist J. Smith has deposited into our lives today, oh God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Lord, we adore you. We adorate you, Father, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Fill him up, oh God, as he has let some of his oil out unto us, oh God. Fill him up. Refresh him again. In the name of Jesus, we have in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. The Lord bless you real good in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. A round of applause as it takes the seat. Let's be seated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I just want to let um, Living Waters know that you are up next. So please be ready now, please. Thank you. Thank you. Living Waters, thank you. You're up next. And uh, just before Living Waters come up, we'd like to recognize special people in our midst. If you're worshiping with us, if you're joining us for any program of any kind, you know, any of our programs for the first time, can you signify, please, by raising up your hand? If this is the first time, oh, my word. Thank you, Jesus. Can we clap for them? Can we just say thank you, Jesus, on their behalf? Let's clap, let's clap, let's clap. Can we make both rise up on our feet, please? And people that are by their sides, please welcome them with a warm and shake. Or oh, there's people just welcome them, please. If you're by their sides, just welcome them, welcome them. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. We celebrate you. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. As well, would like to also uh, recognize the presence of special people that have joined us during the course of the service. We see Pastor Toye. Welcome, sir. Pastor Busayo, welcome, sir. Pastor Barak, every anointed minister of God, our beautiful mommies and daddies, we see you all. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Living waters, thank you. A round of applause as they come up. Thank you very much.
Amen, church. Good afternoon. Are we happy to be here? Amen. Can we give God some praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I am Ria Chuvula from Living Waters Church. And today we have a presentation for you. But firstly, we would like to thank the leaders of the church for inviting us. Amen. And also the youth team for always inviting us. Amen. So we hope that you enjoy this presentation. Is it possible to just turn off the main lights and keep the stage lights on? Amen. Are we ready? Okay, thank you very much. verse 17 to 19 do we know the power that music has on us not just the words the instrumentals but every sound and every beat music has such a power where it can alter our minds our acts and even our thoughts but still we think it's just an innocent beat but need I remind you that it took just a sound to relieve soul from the tormented spirit need I remind you that it took just a sound to overcome Jericho music is more than just a sound in Ephesians it speaks about spiritual songs which means that there is a spiritual realm for songs how can I be a worship leader on Sunday but listen to Afrobeat on the weekends how can I be a preacher on Sunday but dances to R&B every now and then music carries a spirit behind us and now we're going to show you how music impacts us Just continue to practice. Next time I'll see you, I'll teach you more steps. Okay. Pastor, I need help. I need help, Pastor. Let me guide you. Let me guide you. Let me, let's go. Let's go. Be Pastor. still. Be Pastor, quiet. I need be help. Be still and know that I am the anointed one. Let's go. Let okay. me lead you. Be still. I said be still and You're know that you are the one that told me to be still. As in be calm. You're so blind to understand these scriptures. Let's go. Let's go. Let me lead you to the pa way. Let me, let me guide you. Pastor, I need help with these problems I face. 
once we get there, then I will, I will lead you. Okay, pastor. 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 You see, my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Once you get there, you're so blind. Once you get there, you, uh, you'll be able to understand. So let me guide you. I can, what, I'm the one that can see. You can't see. I can see through this. What Look. do you mean by you're so, I'm so blind? What do you mean by this? You understand. Let's go. Pa- oh, Pastor. Pastor, how am I fooling? Because of, your blind- me, Pastor. because of your blindness, your blindness caused us to fall. My blindness caused us to fall. Yes, your blindness. You're the one that's leading me. That doesn't make any sense. It makes sense. Listen, now we are here. What's your questions that you have? Pastor, What's the question? I face these problems with alcohol and masturbation. I need let you me, to help me. Let me tell you. Do you know I drink? I drink alcohol. Let me tell you. I'm a drinker. As a pastor, you're drinking. Yes. What does the Bible tell us? The, the no, Bible. But it says that a little wine for the stomach, it's okay. That's what the Bible tells us. What the Bible says that we should not be drunk, but we should be drunk full of no, the Holy Spirit. That's fine. The Bible tells us we cannot be drunk. But does the Bible tell us we cannot drink? It just says we cannot drink. Pastor, Isn't it? Pastor, you're making no sense to me. Let's get. What's your other question? It's making sense. Masturbation, masturbation. Let me guide you in prayer. Well, come. Let's go into prayer. Let's go into prayer. Pastor. Let's go into prayer. Father, Father, we invoke you right now, Lord, we invoke you, we call upon the Father right now, we want us to speak to you right now, speak to us right now, Lord, we invoke you right now, we invoke you, we call upon you, pastor, 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 what is it, what is it, what is it, tell me, tell me, I received a vision from God, a vision, your, her, vision from a blind man, my God, tell me, what's the vision, tell me, what's the vision, God told me that I should start my ministry, are you sure, yes, that's what he told me, hmm, if you're so sure, then start that ministry, start it, my son, let me tell you, farewell. Farewell. Farewell, Pastor. Start farewell. the ministry. Farewell. farewell. Pastor, I need help in my life. I don't know what I'm doing in my life. I need help. Why? Why? I'm here. Don't worry. Pastor, Follow I need me. help. Follow Are me. you sure you can see, Pastor? God has bestowed this problem onto me. Don't worry. You will follow me. Don't worry. You will know them by their fruits. Being a minister is not just about the title, but it's about the fruits that you have produced. In Exodus 11, verse 16 to 17, it speaks about God putting the spirit of Moses onto the leaders. Your leaders, your congregation are a direct reflection of you. These songs that we listen to promote violence, drugs, adultery, and perversion. What are we doing in our personal lives which is reflecting on our congregation? Just as we saw, the pastor was going through a lot, blind leading the blind. What are we doing in our lives that is reflecting on our congregation? It's show me your fruits and I'll be able to tell you who you are. Oh my God, we've done such a good job. job. I know. <laughs> Have you seen Jared? Pastor, I can't believe he's even a pastor. He's so blind. I he's leading people, but he doesn't know anything that he's doing. For real. Oh, guys, have you seen the new song? I must have just posted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy yeah, used yeah, to yeah, destroy yeah, the kids, yeah. right? Yeah, the I've seen it. Destroy the youth. I Ooh, know. Like, how are these Christians so gullible? Like, they, do they not realize our master's also a great musician? Every yeah. time we post a new song, they fall right into the trap. Yeah, I think true. they're doing good, but instead they're literally putting themselves down. That's the true. <laughs> these people here, we can use we them. We can use yeah. them because our master needs more souls. Yeah. Our, our master needs souls. souls. Our master needs souls. Our master needs souls. God, I need more of you. God, I need more of you in my life. God, I need more of you in my life. God, I can't do it without you. God, as I lay my head to rest, oh God, please be with me, oh God. Visit me in a dream and let me know that you are there. No one will ever love you. You need to be drunk. You need to keep drinking. I know you love wine. I know you love alcohol. You'll never be happy. You'll never be happy. Wait, wait, what? No, 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 no. I need to speak to. 
my mom. Mom. Hi, mom. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Um, obviously, I told you I was going to go to sleep. And as I was sleeping, I was praying before, saying to God, like, I need more of him and I want him to show me his face. And I was just there sleeping. And I had a dream that I was in a type of bondage. And I was trying to get out of that bondage, but there was demons spinning around me, walking around me, laughing at me. And they were telling me to drink more, do all the things that I've been doing. And obviously, it shook me because... I told God that I want to have a dream from him, but I got the total opposite. And recently, I've been drinking a lot, like almost every single day, and I just need help, mom. Manashi, how many times do I have to tell you about the music that you listen to? Don't you realize that it literally has power over your mind, over your soul, over your life? You need to change the music that you listen to. I was actually reading the word. I was reading 1 Samuel 16. And it talks about how King Saul had, he had a spirit that was attached to him. And when, when David played the harp, the spirit left him. So if you think about it, if, if music has the power to, to set you free, clearly it has the power to put you in bondage. Manashi, you really need to change the music you listen to. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Mom, because recently I've been taking a salsa class, as you know, and I feel like every time that I would come home from that salsa class and be dancing, it wouldn't sit right in my spirit, and I know that I need help, and I'm willing to get that help. Well, I'm, I'm actually glad that you've come to this understanding. Um, can we just pray real quick? Okay. Father God, I thank you that you have allowed your daughter to come to this understanding. I pray that you may continue to give her the strength and the wisdom that she needs to overcome this situation in her life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. I'll see you later, Mom. Right, bye. Daniel 5 tells us about that at the sound of the instrument, everyone would bow down and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's God. What this tells us that at the sound that we listen to, we bow down and worship a God. This tells us that, that we shouldn't bow down and just worship any, any God. We should know what we're listening to. When, when Daniel was in, was in Jerusalem, when Daniel was... We should listen with our ears. Lord, I need you. Where are you? I've been trying to find you. Lord, I need you right now. I've been serving you. Pastor, but I can't, I can't Pastor, find you, Lord. I can't Pastor. find you. I need you. God, I've been serving you, but I can't find you. Lord, where are you? Lord, Pastor, where are you? Pastor, I'm here. Why are you calling me? What do you mean when you're looking for my God? Don't you know that salvation is You're the one that lead. Why are you looking for me? me? God, I need you. I'm looking for you, but God, I can't, I can't find you. I can't reach you. God, help me. Please, I need you. Pastor, you're not I making any God. sense. I need you. I can't, I can't find Our you. Our master needs souls. You. You're the one that led me. Our I'm master needs souls. God, I'm trying Our to reach you. Our master needs souls. Stop looking for Stop me. Our master needs souls. What do you mean? Stop. Our master needs souls. Pastor, our master needs souls. Our master needs souls. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 14, Jesus says that when the blind lead the blind, they both fall into a pit. This is a representation of many believers today, the blind leading the blind. Jesus was referring to the Pharisees. Although they were religious people, their lives did not reflect God. How many times do we need to say that Christian is a religious life? Um, that Christian is not for everyone. And... Um,
The Pharisees of today are worship leaders, dancing to songs that worship the devil and leading worship on Sundays. This conversation is getting boring. When are we going to start choosing righteousness? The Pharisees of today are preachers, misleading people with twisted scriptures, preaching heresies to people just to please them, or to spin the true scriptures of God. The true gospel of God remains undiluted and untainted. You cannot serve two masters. Music is a weapon. If used wrongly, it can destroy you. Do you know that the serpent of old, the one who fell from heaven, was a master musician? Have you not read Ezekiel 28 verse 14? Your worship to God will set you free. Your worship to the enemy will give you into eternal bondage. It is not just Afrobeats. It is not just an innocent song. And it's not just an instrumental. May God deliver us all. We have been living water school in ministry. And we thank you. Woo! 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 Are you clapping for Jesus? Are you clapping for Jesus? That was powerful. Never seen something like that before I tell you never seen something like that before praise Jesus can we just say a word of prayer into the life of this young minister and say the Lord refill you in Jesus name every virtue that has come out of you today the Lord replenishes it in multiple folds it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus you have laid your hands on the plow you will not look back in the name of Jesus thank you and God bless you thank you let's be seated let's be seated we also want to seize this medium to recognize the presence of their leader, Pastor Noella. Are you here, Pastor Noella? Oh, the Lord bless you. Come on, come, 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 madam. We have a special seat for you in front. Thank you. Thank you for raising those soldiers. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Who remembers uh, our, our chant, our slogan? The one that we started with. This auntie just wants a gift by force. I, I will give you. I will give you. You have tried. You have done well. I will give you. Don't worry. We have gifts. I'll, I'll send you one. Thank you very much. So we're all going to chant it together again. Times and seasons. When is the time? When is the time? When is the time to create impact? Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, so also we'd like to recognize um, the presence of RCCG, the Sort Out Assembly Youth Group. Are you here with us? Are you here with us? All right, we're waiting for you wherever you are. Thank you. PIC Choir. Are you here with us? PIWC Choir. Or they on the other way. All right, we're waiting for you if you're watching us. RCCG Fountain of Grace Youth Choir, are you here? We're waiting for you if you're watching. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So right now, we'd like to have our breakup sessions and to anchor us. We'll invite Sister Amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. So it's time for our breakout session, and it's time to learn. Um, media, can you please help? Yes. So we can all see this um, picture here with these lovely faces. Um, we're having five workshops, and I'm sure so many people registered to be part of this workshop. So the first one would be for how to use AI for everyday tasks which will be led by Naze Abel and Tosin Oke. And the job recruitment, which is the second one. The third one is for phone photography. Fourth one, public speaking. And the fifth one is for social media. First, second, and third will be in the church audit auditorium. The fourth one will be at the foyer, just out there. The fifth one will be at the basement. The ushers will be outside to lead us to our classes. So if we could all please be on our feet and locate our classes. And before we leave, let's just know when we're coming back, we, the moderators will have to ask us from every workshop what we've learned. Just one minute. We're going to have just five minutes to speak with each other 
from our group and also explain whatever we have learned from our classes. Please stand up and help yourself with sweets, with got drinks while you locate your classes. Okay? So this session will take just 25 minutes. So class one will be at that part there. Two will be here. The third one will be here. Fourth will be at the foyer out there. And the fifth one will be at the basement. So please, ushers, help everyone to their classes. And we'll be back in 25 minutes. Help yourself out with drinks. We have sweets. There's cake outside. Thank you. All right, so in order to save time, can we uh, make it real quick, please? Um, you can look on the screen. You have the five areas we are going to be majoring in tonight. Look at the pictures. You're going to see the facilitators. It's easier that way. And then you can just find them standing in front of you and join up with them. Thank you. Artificial intelligence here, right? Yeah, artificial intelligence. We've got this section for you. For artificial intelligence, from this section where Evangelist J. Smith is sat, artificial intelligence, job recruitment skills, Pastor Busayo is standing right at the class already, in front of the class. Phone photography, this section please. Phone photography, if you're sat here, it means that you are for phone photography. Phone photography here. Public speaking in the foyer. Public speaking in the foyer. And then social media.